without further ado, oh, he just hopped up. You're just going to hop back on. Okay. Uh, hey, like everyone else. Like, I'm a guest, okay. right? Okay, introducing drum roll, please. Chris <laughs> Bounds, none other than Chris Bounds. Um, a little bit about Chris. He is the founder of Invested Agents. He did his first four deals while attending college. I mean, I thought that was a real plus when we first started dating. I was like, wow, impressive. With his wife, me, <laughs> he flipped, he has flipped over 180 houses. It's been a fun ride, y'all. Um, his real estate team includes 77 agents across 13 states. So let's welcome Chris Bounds. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, thanks, Jamie. So uh, I'm gonna go super, super fast because I've got a great topic that I love. Um, we flipped a lot of houses, but really what I like is building wealth through rental properties. And I'm gonna show you how you can build a million dollar rental portfolio in three years. It's I, I believe this to be the ultimate guide to building wealth and passive income in real estate done this webinar um, and some other channels and it's been just very impactful. A lot of people get a lot of value out of it, take notes. And um, I'm gonna show you a couple of case studies where combined we have over $250,000 in gross profit. Ultimately, um, I'm gonna get to the end, push through fast, show you a simple plan of action that you can use to build a million dollar rental portfolio. So get ready. Um, a quick rundown about me, got started uh, in college, flipped four houses uh, while still in college. Um, this is actually the very first picture, <laughs> the very first house I did. I, I'm not a fashionable guy, and that was true in college as well as it is now. Uh, there's me, cargo shorts, and probably an Amber Gumby shirt. Um, shaking hands with my mentor, first deal. I think we got it about $15,000. That was in San Antonio, Texas. And then, um, so yeah, did four deals that first year, graduated, moved to Houston, then got a good paying sales job. And um the, the, really the only thing that gets in the way of great life or the number one thing that gets in the way of great life is a good life. And I had a good life, um, sales job, but I uh, got married 2011. Jamie tells the story better than I did. I, I do, but uh, we're like a couple of weeks, maybe a month uh, uh, married. And I dropped this bomb saying, Hey babe, I want to go flip houses. And she was a little nervous at first, but w went along with the ride and started buying uh, flip properties that, well, we thought flips ended up being rentals. Good decision at the time. Got licensed in 2014, then in 2015 went full time, um, joined EXP Realty in 2018, just part of the wealth building, passive income. Um, 2019 started a Bounds Realty Group to just uh, give greater support for our realtor partners and, and, and folks that are that we network with and with training leads and all the other stuff. And then 2020 Invested Agents was uh, birth really out of a local event that we've been doing for years. All in all, 180 houses, 17 million in funds. This is how um, you can get connected with us, which if you're watching this, you probably already figured that out. Okay, so why? Why do I get, a, why am I doing, sitting in here doing this like all day virtual event? Um, why do I get up at 4.30 in the morning? Um, I slept in today till 4.40. Uh, why do I get up so early? Um, it's because my family, um, it's because Jamie, two, our two uh, just wonderful kids. That's it's, uh, Nathan, he's seven, Ellie's four. They're a bundle of uh, chaos and joy at the same time. Um, but that's that's why I do it. And you got to have a why too, because the uh, this industry, it's like fun, exciting, it's sexy, but it's also stressful at times. Um, and I truly love what I do. Um, even whenever we get like just horrible disasters, like like what Ian was talking about, where we got to replace entire plumbing lines. We got one of those this week. Uh, not, not fun, but um, I just, I really love it. I truly love it. So um, you've got to have your why. And in, in financial, your, a financial goal is really part of the why, but it's not the root why. Um, but money does buy things. It buys freedom, it buys time, it buys options. So going along with this, um, a million dollars is touted by a lot of the gurus out there as like the goal. Like this is where you want to be um, to to have in your retirement nest egg. Um, and then if you have a 4% annual distribution, leaving you with 40 grand a year to live off of. I don't, have a, I don't know about you, but that doesn't really buy me the type of lifestyle that I want to retire on. Um, that combined with whatever social security or welfare will exist at that time is not going to be much, not going to be fun. 
But let's just play around with this number. Million dollars does sound like a lot, but I'm going to show you that um, you already see that it's not. But let's just play around with that. If you made $100,000 today and you made that consistently, um, after taxes, now th this varies depending on state and um, a lot of other stuff, but um, at least in Texas, after taxes, roughly 70, 70 grand left. Now you got living expenses. You got another 48 grand in expenses, leaving you with $29,000 left over. If you don't spend a dime on uh, nice vacations, upgrading your lifestyle, college, uh, your kid, your like your kid's education fund, healthcare, um, whether just ongoing or like health scares, it happens. Or have family members that that you need to take care of. Um, if you don't do any of those things, how long does it take to raise your million dollars? Thirty four years of hard hard work. This does keep inflation out of it, uh, but thirty four years of hard work. I don't really like that. Like all that to live off 40 grand a year, not fun for me. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can work smart and you can do that within three years. This doesn't mean you retire in three years. It means that you can actually hit your goal in as little as three years. So quick disclosures, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an accountant, a CPA, bookkeeper. Uh, I am a real estate agent, I'm a real estate investor. I'm doing these strategies. I don't say this as in like, hey, you do this. I'm saying it, um, I'm giving these ideas, just like take everything I say and then filter it through your own goals, your own risk tolerance, your own desires and your own unique financial situation. Talk with your own CPAs and attorneys and all that and um, just figure out what's right for you. So uh, a couple quick definitions, cash flow, common sense, um, whatever's coming in and out of your business, income minus expenses, that's your cash flow or it's your net operating income. Wealth, assets minus liabilities, that's what wealth is, or also called your net worth. But I like to define wealth as time, a concept I got from Rich Dad Poor Dad. If you have enough money coming in every single month that's more than your expenses, you're infinitely wealthy. Versus if you have a million dollars in the bank and it's not generating enough income to uh, replace what you're spending, then that means your, your net worth is decreasing every single month. And it's going down. Eventually, it'll run out. And your goal there is like to die before you run out of money. Um, I, again, I, I don't like that type of game. Um, I want to have infinite wealth. So there's a lot of ways to make money in real estate. And if you're in the game for a long enough time period, you're probably going to do a mix of these um, just to run through it quick. Lenders, really, cash flow is the, um, the the name of the game. There, it's the most passive way to get involved in real estate because you're just you're loaning your money, you get interest on it. Good. Wholesalers, uh, other than deal flow, that can give them cash flow. There's really not a lot of other benefits. I mean, you, you can make a lot of money, but um, the flipper has a little bit more in, in the sense that they can, they're can they buying equity. That's good. There's a lot of risk. I mean, because it could be negative equity if the, it's not a good deal. Um, they, they are able to take advantage of leverage, but the landlord, the rental property gives you equity, gives you cash flow, appreciation, tremendous tax benefits, especially if you have a W-2 job or in, 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 or you're in like one of those higher income brackets. Uh, and then leverage. We all like leverage, right? Okay. I'm going to go fast in this section. You thought I was moving fast before. Um, the, uh, the Burr strategy. A lot of people have heard of the Burr strategy. And that that's um, a strategy which I alluded a little bit when I was talking about Jennifer um, and how you can buy properties. I'm going to take a little twist on that and we call it the slow flip strategy. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, this is a very, very uh, um, popular way to accumulate rental property. So first strategy, this is what it looks like. First, you go out and buy a property. Um, you're typically using private financing. Um, you could use cash. Uh, I like to use private financing or hard money lenders that'll fund you, if you buy it cheap enough, up to 100% of the deal plus rehab because you're going to need to do a rehab because that's why you're getting in a discount. In most cases, you're going to have to do a, a rehab. So you got there, you buy the property. Now you got to rehab it, get it up to a full value position so you can rent it out. You get a tenant in there, rent it out, let them start paying the bills. All uh, Life is good, but you still have to refinance it. This is when you go to Jennifer, refinance it in your long term. And if you bought it cheap enough, now you can refi rate and term with her um, with like a straight note, like where you don't have to put any money out of pocket. And that's what I love. 
That's that's the Burr strategy in a nutshell. So now you refinanced in your long term low interest rate loan and everything's not I don't like to use the word clockwork, but from a financial perspective, like it's smooth sailing from here. Um, it, I mean, from a uh, financing perspective, um, then you repeat. That's the last step. You repeat, go out and buy another property because because you did the burst strategy as opposed to just using conventional straight up you have more cash you didn't have to put a lot of cash down now you can do this over and over and over but our little twist here is you sell um and it may seem counterintuitive to sell a property when you're trying to uh when you're trying to accumulate rental properties but it allows you when you do it strategically the ability to ex um exponentially grow a portfolio by reinvesting the proceeds into multiple properties. Here's a case study, 2730 Mesquite. This was the very first property that Jamie and I bought uh, together in Houston. It's um, like the only only appointment I think she's ever went on. Um, and there's a reason why. That blue carpet, or you can't tell it's blue, it's in the bottom right corner. Um, that carpet had been there for as long as blue, I don't, I don't know when blue was popular, maybe in the 70s, but that carpet had the stains on it throughout the 30, 40, 50 years that they had lived there. It was just disgusting. They had animals in there, um, dogs, and they didn't clean the floor at all. It was absolutely gross. It smelled worse. And uh, Jamie was in there for about five minutes before she had to politely just excuse herself to sit in the car while I locked up the deal, which I did, and we rehabbed it did a rental grade rehab. So as we were doing this project, we're like, hey, why don't we just rent it out? So we ended up doing a rental grade, rental grade rehab. What that means is we made it look like the rental comps. It targeted what we were trying to get for in rent. We rented it out, then we refinanced and we held this property for about three years. Now with this property, it appreciated like crazy over the next three years which meant taxes and insurance was now eating into our cash flow, but it went up in value a lot. So we sold it. Um, we did have to do another rehab to get it up to top ARV or um, after repair value, like the full market value, make sure we squeeze all the equity juice we could out of it. We did sold first weekend, I think at asking price um, and it was great. This is a little timeline of what it looked like over the years. At the top is when we bought it, middle when it was rented, and bottom is when it was all shiny for the new owner. So a uh, quick rundown of the numbers is 85,000. We bought it, 65,000 in repairs, 14,000 uh, in cash flow over the, uh, the period of the lease. Sold it for 237,000, giving us a gross profit of $100,000. Um, Another case study, bought it. This one, we didn't have to do a lot to. I think it was like a HUD home. We got foreclosed on uh, from another investor. But ultimately, we did a little rehab, rented out, refinanced. Then same thing like the other one, went up in value a lot, squeezed cash flow. So we sold it. And this is what it, the numbers look like. 80000 purchase price, repairs, 36000 um, the cash flow almost 13,000, sold it for 224, giving us a gross profit of 119,000. One other case study, 835 Forest Park. If the other two were home runs, this is more like a base hit or maybe a double. Again, we didn't have to do a lot of work into this one. Um, we bought it, probably just, we replaced the flooring downstairs and probably some fixtures, but that's about it. Um, and then rented it out for a while. Uh, when the tent moved out, we sold it. 103,000 purchase price, 15,000 repairs, cash flow, and only five grand. Not not much cash flow here because the tenant moved out early. They actually abandoned their lease. Uh, she gave us advance notice. She had a, a an issue come up, um, a personal issue. So we're like, cool. Hey, just let us um, go in and sell it, and then then once we sell it, your lease is done. Sold it 150, 157,000, giving us 43 grand of gross profit. Not a bad deal. But here's the cool thing: if we would have flipped. Any of these properties, like the first two, those home runs, if we would have flipped them, we would have made about 30 grand each. Instead, we made over 100,000. If we would have flipped this one, we would have made about 15,000. Instead, we made 43. And because we held it for a while, it was in a lower tax bracket. All right, so here's the plan of action. Um, got about 10 minutes left. So I know that these are static numbers, no matter where, you're, wherever you are in the country, the numbers are gonna be different for your area. I've gotta use something, so I'm gonna use these. Um, if you have a property, for that's a, well, actually what we're going to do is we're going to 
uh, take this strategy and, and push it out for a three year or a 10 year time period. I'm going to show you what it looks like if you were to buy a property a year for 10 years, assuming the full value would be 150,000. 150, You're going to refinance out uh, at 75% loan to value. So 112,500 rent, 1% rule here, 1500 bucks, PITI. Now, when I did this, um, I think I estimated about 6% interest for investor financing. You can get much cheaper rates nowadays, um, which gives you more cash flow. But using this example, reserves, 15, uh, 150 bucks, that's your capital expenditures. You got to have that cash flow, $238. So buying one property a year on your first year, that's this year. Um, you got buy property, you got $238 uh, in cash flow uh, every single month. You're not rich. Cool. You got a property. You're not, you, you can't retire yet. Year two doubles, three, four. All right. Five years in, you got five properties, got a little over a thousand dollars a month. That's pretty good. Not bad. That, that's actually pretty substantial for a lot of families. Um, hundred, um, $187,000 equity. Year six, seven. Eight, nine, you're over two grand now in cash flow. Ten. There you go. You bought one property a year for 10 years. At the end of that time period, you have 2300 bucks in, in cash flow every single month, $375,000. But it gets even better than that. There's a little hidden gem here because you're actually already a millionaire. You only have $375,000. Uh, $75,000 in equity, assuming no debt pay down and no appreciation. But once your tenants pay off the property, if it doesn't, if they don't go up in value at all, not one dime, then once your tenants pay off the property, you now control and own $1.5 million in real estate assets. You're a millionaire. You just got to let your tenants pay off the properties. But of course, we know properties do go up in value. They tend to double in value every 10 years. Depends on your area and, and, and all that. But roughly about every 10 years, they're going to double in value. So that's pretty good. But this is how you can use the slow flip strategy to do even better. That was a static example. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. You bought one a year for 10 years. But on year or starting on year six, what we're going to do is we're going to take the worst property you have. It, it usually is the one because it went up in value so much. It doesn't cash flow anymore. You got a lot of equity, just doesn't cash flow. Or it's just that pain in the butt property that's always got to repair um, or bad tenants. So uh, starting on year six, you're going to take that property and you're going to sell it. And you're going to do that year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you will have sold five properties over that time period. But you're not just going to take that money and run off and go on a huge vacation. You're going to reinvest it. You're going to buy another property to replace it. And you're going to buy one more in addition because you should have equity, right? Um, and you're going to double what you sold. So you bought 10 originally. You sold five, but you use the money to replace those five and buy one more. So you bought 10 more, really, giving you a total of 15 properties. Now your cash flow is $3,500 a month and you have over half a million dollars in equity. And once your tenants pay them off, if they don't go up in value at all, you have $2.25 million in real estate assets. That's huge. That right there is life-changing for pretty much any family out there. Like if that doesn't change your life, that um, there's, the, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, that, that is absolutely life-changing. So that's if you follow that from a slow flip strategy. You want to be a little bit more aggressive, Buy two a year for 10 years, giving you 20 properties at the year at the end of the 10 years. So you start this year, 2030, now you got 20 properties. Starting in year six, you don't just sell one now, you sell two of your worst properties. So year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you'll sell 10 properties. You'll have reinvested those not into replacing just the two you sold each year, but you'll actually replace them and then buy two new ones. Um, giving you 20 new properties, giving you a total of 30 properties um, after your new property. So you bought 20, you sold 10, but you doubled those to buy 20 more. Now you got 30. Giving you seven grand a month in cash flow, $1.1 million in equity. But when your tenants pay them off, you got $4.5 million in assets if they don't go up in value at all. And we know they do. If you want to do it in three, three properties per year, get out there and get really aggressive. 30, 30 properties at the end of uh, the 10 years. But year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you sold 15. 
and use the proceeds to double them, giving you 30 new ones. Now you got 45 total, 10 grand a month in cash flow, $1.687 million in equity, but your tenants are going to pay them off. $6.75 million in assets, assuming they don't go up in value at all. Again, properties go up in value, right? Um, so you're a millionaire. It only takes six properties, six properties, and you can be a millionaire in three years. That would give you $900,000 based on this example of assets once your tenants pay them off, plus appreciation. Two a year. You just need to buy two a year. That's how simple it is. Anyone can do this. Anyone can go out and buy a property. It's not that difficult. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have a lot of money in your pocket. There are smart ways using hard money, using private lenders, using um, uh, JVs and partnerships to get in these properties and start building your wealth. It just takes with starting. You just have to, have to have to start. And you don't have to go out and buy one a year. You can buy one every other year. You can buy one every two years. But ultimately, just start buying rentals, start buying assets. So a couple of key points and I'll go to questions. Buy like a flipper. That doesn't mean you have to buy as cheap because you don't. A flipper has to make their money now. You make your money over time. Uh, what that means is know your numbers. Manage like a professional. Bad landlords equal good deals for investors. Don't be one of those guys. You want to manage like a professional. There's a lot of great professional um, property managers out there that just charge a flat fee and um, and let them handle all the, the, the dirty work. You just handle the cash flow stuff. Uh, financing. You want to know your financing situation long term. Um, Short-term financing is pretty easy, but you need to make sure that you're getting fo with folks like Jennifer to understand your full long-term, um, how you how you plan and um, how you would fit in those type of products. Eventually, uh, if you own enough properties, uh, it'll make it harder for Jennifer to finance you. But there are local banks that can still finance you. The financing is a little different; may not be as as good as what Jennifer can get you. But um, from a cash flow standpoint, they're just amazing. Um, accounting, take uh, you've got to do really, really good accounting. Don't do your own bookkeeping. That's like the bookkeepers are worth their weight in gold. Tax uh, CPAs worth their weight in gold. Don't do that yourself. Um, don't do TurboTax. Like this is real estate. You're, you're, you're running a business. Get real professional. Real professionals doing your doing your finances. They will pay for themselves. I promise you. And then escrow. You've got to escrow for capital expenditures and repairs and vacancies. They will happen. If you own them long enough, they will happen. Even the first two examples are the tenants. They didn't move out the entire time. I don't think they asked us for a single repair because we did a good job. But when they moved out so we could get ready for sell, well, that time period that it was vacant, it still had a mortgage due. And we had some money in the account to pay for that. So, and then lastly, reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. You um, don't just go blow all the money on a new, like a uh, uh, Range Rover upgrade, like this huge, like mansion, or I don't know, I don't know, uh, Bentley. <laughs> um, treat yourself, like enjoy it. We we bought a nice, it's like a $1,500 coffee machine on the first one, and then we reinvested the rest. So treat yourself. I think some other times we just went on like really, really nice dinners. Um, make it fun. Treat yourself, like keep it interesting, but ultimately reinvest because the more you reinvest, the more it grows. If you pull everything out, it's just hard to grow. So hope that was interesting <laughs> and you got a lot of value out of that. Uh, I don't know if we've got any questions here, but- um, That coffee maker is just the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I didn't see any questions. Well, I'll be in the chat, so um, we've got two other minutes. Huh? Oh, yeah, we, we've got a couple of the minutes. Um, so uh, this is this is the a point that was um, I've, been, I've been hanging out on the Clubhouse um, app, which you can find me on Clubhouse if if you're not on there already. But uh, Grant Cardone chimed in on 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 there, and he was like, uh, he made the comment. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pair, um, preface the comment first. Um, wholesaling, flipping houses working for commissions, you can make a ton of money doing that. You can you can become, you can save a million dollars and make a million dollars doing that. But the problem is you have to keep doing it. You gotta do it every single month. The moment you stop, either because you have to, circumstance, the economy, you get hurt, or you just get sick of it. Like the money stops. But that's not true with rental property. It's not true with passive income. And that's why Aaron was talking about, like build passive income, build passive income. So anyone can do this. You have to build passive income. And that's why I fundamentally like if you're going to go out there and wholesale houses and flip houses and do commissions, great. 
but figure out a strategy where maybe you like sell three houses, wholesale three, buy one rental, three houses, buy one rental till eventually where it's like do one flip now buy one rental. And then eventually like maybe you don't have to flip. Maybe you don't have to sell houses anymore if you don't want to. So that's all I got. Um, I know we got our next guest and we'll hop off. Thank you all. I'll be in the chat and uh, thanks again. Thank you. Very informative as always.